Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV7. Now it's time for my favorite time of the week. I get to meet with the Laurel and Hardy of Ken Island, the historians of Ken Island, the Cheech and Chong of Ken Island. I've got Nick Hoxeter. Nick, thanks for being with us again. My pleasure. Great to see you. My pleasure. And Bill Denny. Bill, great to see you. Mm -hmm. Great to see you. Now, Bill, tell me, we're sitting in this beautiful building, in this beautiful office. Tell me where we are, besides the fact I'm in old Stevensville, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Where are we? My name's Bill Denny, naturally, and a lot of people know me, and a lot of people wish they didn't know me. <laughs> but anyway, here I am, and I'm sitting in a church that was built by my great-great-grandfathers. This is great the great White, Yeah, great. Okay. Denny's and White's. Their names are on the windows, and the old church was built in 1857 by my grandfathers. So I love this old church. And many times people have offered me money for it and so forth. And I usually tell them, you don't have money enough to buy my heritage. And I love it. I live in the house next door. So between the church and my home next door, I'm really happy. And this is in sort of the middle of Stevensville. It's right there uh, just after you get through the crossroads, which would be Franham's old store, and Groman's old store, and the IGA store, and so forth and so on. So I'm just up the street from them on the right going toward Love Point. And if you want to know where I am really, just come by and you'll see four sheep and one goat out <laughs> alongside the church. But this is a beautiful old church. It has original ceiling. And everybody comes in and looks at the ceiling, it's wainscot, and they say, how did that ceiling ever stay in that condition? And I said, well, really, no one could walk on the ceiling. And that's the reason it's in the condition it is today, which fascinates most people. They can't figure that out. But anyway, this old church is very pretty. The cement that they used to put the blocks in and so forth was part oyster shell. And that makes it way back when they made cement out of oyster shells and, and many other things. But uh, I love the old church, and it's really uh, a beautiful thing to realize that your family and your great before I was born was here. And it makes me so f good, feel so good to come in here and see this church. So anytime you come in Stevensville, Either stop at the church or stop at my home, and I'll open up the church for you to see what it looked like and where it came from 1857. But even more than that, we have the old Larry Hotel across the street, which many people have stayed in in the earlier days. They would stay there and then go down to the Love Point Ferry and catch the ferry the next morning. Or they'd come over late on the Philadelphia Love Point Ferry and then come up here and spend the night. So it's a neat old hotel now, it's a private home but next to it was Dr. Snyder which was one of our local doctors and that home burned down much to my disgust and amazement but it was such a beautiful home but then the next place was the Stevensville Bank which is located on the lot that's owned right next to the county, own a little park there. And uh, then next would be Franham's IGA store, which now they have a restaurant in, and uh, they have, uh, most of the time, they have late night dinners and a bar, so forth, where you can get drinks and so forth. But then on through Stevensville, you had Clark's Old Store, which is right next to that restaurant. And that's where I bought my first Red Rider BB gun for $3. Mm -hmm. Took me a year and a half to save up $3. Mm -hmm. I saved it penny at a time. But I loved that BB gun. And uh, Mr. Clark was very glad to sell me that BB gun until I went around town. And you know what happens <laughs> when you have BBs and BB gun. This window got broke, that window got broke. Everybody in town had a BB gun. So one would blame it on the other. So I was lucky enough not to be around when they got caught. And you know what happened then, somebody had to pay for a window. 
But then you go on through town, and you'll see the Fran Franham store, and then the IGA store, and then you'd see the old Groman store across the street. Mr. Uh, Henry Groman had a store that sold all your boots and your rubber suits and farm things for farmers, which around here at the time, there were a lot of farmers here. And of course, they came into Groman's to buy their different boots and different coats and things that they could wear around the barn. Then you keep on going and you go on up into Stevensville, which is where my dad at the fork of the road had W. E. Denny and Son, and he sold Chrysler and Plymouth cars. And when I got out of school, after many years, it felt like millions of years before I got out of school. But anyway, I graduated from school and came home, and I wanted to be a farmer. But my dad was working so hard in the garage that I said, I've got to help him. I just can't go down here on the farm and milk cows and plant wheat and corn and soybeans. So I helped my dad, and he loved me for it. And, of course, we worked very good together. And then across the street from my dad was Dr. Sadamar, another doctor in town. And he actually delivered me when I was born, and later on I got married, and he delivered two of my sons, my oldest sons. And I got to know Doc Sidemar pretty well, because on many occasions he had to either sew me up or <laughs> give me a needle, and his needles were the biggest thing. They hurt so bad, but actually they were just little teeny needles, but I was scared to death because I didn't like a needle and I didn't like anybody sewing me up with what they called then catgut. And I asked Dr. Sidemar one time, I said, Doc, you know you're hurting me. He says, that boy, I'm not hurting any, so I don't care about hurting you. <laughs> but he was a tough doctor. He was a German doctor who fought us in the First World War. And the Second World War, he came over here and lived and became a very nice doctor. What we'll do, we'll come, Bill, back in a couple minutes. I want you to describe what's in the old church now. Okay. It's pretty amazing. Because I, I just walked through, my eyes popped out of my mm -hmm. head. You got some neat stuff. Yeah, right. it is neat. Now, Nick, you've been good over here. You've been patient. Okay, you're a good man. Now, tell me, what are you? recollect I mean growing up tell me was this it was a practicing church or what was going on in this building growing this, up? this church yeah yeah uh, I I don't remember being a practicing church I remember back in the 40s we would have Boy Scout meetings here okay right here in the where we were first floor here yeah. Okay. oh yeah and then uh, I I can also remember that the Methodist women used to have the big dinners here oh, so it was a Methodist but it was a Methodist oh, it was church. a Methodist okay. yeah it was, it was actually Billy I think it was a part of the uh, yeah, it was Trinity Downs Methodist Church. Church. Right. Yeah, okay. so, Downs. yeah. Uh, I wanted to tell you, you know, I, Billy and I have been friends for about eighty years. Sure. We used to uh, in the morning. A Christmas. conservative estimate, eighty. Yeah, years. conservative. <laughs> uh, I can remember, and I'm sure he does. Christmas mornings, we lived across the street from one another, and about four or five o'clock, without our parents knowing it, either he'd come to my house and we'd play with my toys. And then I would go over about six o'clock and play with his. Now, toys. how far was that from? Right, I mean, Bill's oh, Bill's were quite, okay, right? Yeah, right across okay, the street. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, but yeah, um, but um, I wanted to say a little something about the history. He 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 said what was here uh, when William Claiborne came here in 1631. He set up his buildings. Mm -hmm. Everything was down at Kent Point. Okay. And uh, he built a fort there, Fort Gray. Uh, and then it only lasted about 20 to 30 years, and everything moved to Broad Creek. That's Bay City today. Do we know why it moved? Well, the, the, the first thing to move was the Episcopal Church. Okay. And when it moved, they started following it. And uh, it became, a lot of people don't know, Kent Island at one time was a county unto itself. Just Kent Island? Kent okay. Island County. Yes, right. it was. Okay. And I've got history books on that to prove that. People have and part of Maryland. Oh, yeah. It's oh, part of Maryland. Well, yeah. in the beginning, we were part of Virginia. That's because thought, yes. William Claiborne was the secretary of, uh, I can't remember what secretary he was of uh, Virginia, the Commonwealth okay. of Virginia. Okay. Governor Wyatt was the governor, and 
William Claiborne was the next highest officer directly under him. He came here, loved the island, gave the Indians some trinkets, and took the took the island away. Made from a good him. deal. He made, made, a, good made deal. a very good deal. Yeah. And he said he was down to Ken Point. He and uh, Lord Baltimore fought tooth and nail over whether this would be Maryland or Virginia. That's right. Okay. And, right. and yeah, and they had uh, battles at sea, battles on the land. Okay. Uh, he would Claiborne would kick Lord Baltimore out. And then come they go back, the other way. We kick him out. So we were a part of Virginia. A part. It was amazing. Um, in my high school days, Billy's father in the garage, he had na- uh, kegs of nails all around the stove. And he put boards on it, and the old timers would come in there at nighttime. And, so and I had more history there than I learned in any in school. school. They they would they would be after each other. Well, we should still be a part of Virginia. Well, when would, you look at a map, the eastern shore of Virginia, as it ties in the eastern shore of Maryland, I mean, we om- it almost makes geographic sense that this would be part it, of Virginia, does. doesn't it? And we wouldn't have had the bridges because it would have been a part of Virginia, <laughs> right, Bill? We'd ha- we'd have a tunnel. Right? Yeah, okay. but I want to say they moved up to uh, to Broad Creek. They had a jail. They had a, a um, courthouse. They had. Oh, well, give me about a year's. About when? Uh, roughly. Uh, roughly. Uh, yeah, roughly uh, 1640, somewhere around okay. in that. Now, you gym. and Bill weren't part of that. Well, we were there. We were hiding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, as I said, we they had a courthouse. They had a post office. Uh, the ferry ran there. Okay. Uh, a guy named Workman had a uh, tavern. Um, and this is a ferry over to Annapolis. Oh yeah, that's okay. what he wanted. Sixteen forties. Yeah. See, huh? Kent, Kent Island was a, was a was a part of St. Mary's County, Anne Arundel County, Talbot County, Kent County, and finally ended up being a part of Centerville. Okay. They had petitioned the Parliament in Annapolis to let them con- continue as their own separate county, but they said no. So no. we had Queen Anne's County, then the Kent Narrows split, and then it was. Ken Island That's County? right. That's right. Oh, wow. That's Didn't right. There, there was a, there was a, it, I guess you would say uh, there was a ferry that went across from Kent Island to Graysonville side. Okay. And that's called Ferry Marsh. A lot of mm-hmm. old timers to this day call it, Fer- okay. they call it Ferry Marsh. Mm-hmm. And it, it, but Eastern Shore has a lot of history, and but Kent Island had the history first. Outside of probably the uh, the Commonwealth, uh, Massachusetts had their own colony. And the and Roanoke it, settlement and stuff right, like that. We were right there at 16. Well, we were about the yeah. fourth, third or fourth okay. one. You know, and uh, the Indians were here. I wrote, uh, uh, Mrs. Denny, his, his aunt, wrote a wonderful article, and she let me put it, her daughter let me put it into my third book about the Indians of Cat Island. It's a story which... It was beautiful that Mrs. Denny took the time in her latter years to really do that. You know what, what tribe? A tribe or tribes? Oh, they were Mattapeak. Oh, they were all yeah, numerous. Yeah. All time. And if you know where, coming up the shoreline now, up in the area where Hemingway's and that area right, is, right. that was the last known site of the Indians, Indians, and they were living in log huts. Really? Yeah. Mm. And that was that was one of the last. And when they tried to develop that, I, I really went. And, and, and spoke, and I said, look, it's the last known place of the Indians. It's history. Leave, them, leave it alone. Want, we, leave you've got so much to do. But uh, Ken Allen, you know, you, we were we were kind of dormant for a long time. But after World War II, uh, David Nichols came from Baltimore. He was one of the State Roads Commissioners. Today it's SHA, but then it was the State Roads Commission. And he started buying up the farms. And, uh, for development purposes. For development okay. purposes. Okay. And, uh, and you couldn't blame the farmers. He gave them more money than they would have made in a lifetime sure. the way they looked at it. So sure. they sold their farms. It's a good deal. Yeah, very good deal. Uh, one of the old, one of the old, and one of the best I thought was Bay City. Now Dr. Cook owned that, as Billy and I talked about it one time. I think before with you, but Dr. Cook was an exceptionally old gentleman. Uh, he had an office in Baltimore, but he had bought the Bay City farm, and he had um, built a log cabin. That's what he lived in. He put a he put a an old uh, rustic log cabin. Oh like yeah, the, Abraham oh, yeah. Lincoln. That's where he lived. Okay, and he had all kind of money. All right, uh, but he every every work weekday. He would go to take his terrible plane. That's what the car was called. It was made by Hudson. Okay. And we used to call it a terrible plane. <laughs> okay. And he would go up to Love Point Ferry 
and Billy can tell you, he always wore knickers and he had one sock up, one sock down. I thought, here's this guy. He could probably. <laughs> worth a million. Yeah, worth a million. Doesn't really get his cigar. I, and they had all these leather chairs on the on the Smokey Joe. And he'd go down and get his cup of coffee and his sun paper. I can see it now, Fred. And sit in that chair. He never moved till we got to Baltimore. Really? Just yeah. sat and relaxed sat, and yeah. read the paper and smoked yeah. a cigar. And, uh, I, I don't know why he sold it, but uh, he, he sold the farm to Dave Nichols. And it is, as I said, I do think it's one of the nicest developments. Of course, mm -hmm. it, it's closer across the bay, you know, and, and okay. the, the view the view is really nice. But Ken Island has so much history. And that's why we're doing the show, because if we don't talk about it, it's going to disappear, it's, isn't it's it? It's going to disappear. Okay, let me go back. Let me go, let me go back. Let's go back to the building here, okay, mm -hmm. or the church. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me... Give me a little history of what you know has took place in this church, and then also what's it used for now? Because I'm going to tell you what, you've got some trinkets out there that are great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we collected them, Janet and I. We go around to the Janet's the, the missus, the and, boss. And she knew the glassware. Okay. Uh, all I knew, it was pretty. <laughs> she knew it was more valuable and uh -huh. carnival wear and so forth and so on, which is very nice, and I love it all. But I really love decoys and duck hunting and shotguns. Now you have decoys. Um, yeah, okay. I, have, I actually have about a hundred decoys out right here, made, right now. And I know the different people that have made them. And they're for sale, Bill. And they're for, for sale. sale. And uh, you know that some people collect certain ones, you know, and others collect Madison Mitchell and so forth. Ward Brothers don't have any Ward Brothers; they're really too valuable. But anyway, I have a few of the others. And uh, I love the old church. I love to display my decoys. I love to talk about duck hunting and so forth. And the church windows, which have my grandfather's at the bottom of them, one of them being Marmaduke White, which I thought was a neat name. And my grandmother was a white grandmother, Denny. And uh, then we have the floor, part of its original. When I bought it, the church never treated it for termites, so part of the floor fell in. I had to take everything out of the building and put new sills across the bottom, white oak sills on the piers, and then put the what was a remainder of the old floor, and then I used new flooring, and part of it is the old floor and part's the new floor. Now, Bill, but, let me just interrupt you. You, got, you bought, when did you buy the building or get the building? I, I bought the building, I think I was about, uh, I'd say it was about 53, Okay. along in there. So it's been in your family since 1953? Well, right. Okay. It, it, my grandfather's and all built it way back there. And the Methodist Church, evidently, they, uh, like Nick said, they probably bought it for a buck or whatever. And, uh, of course, they were Methodists, and uh, they had this church they built. Then the other part, MP and ME, Mestus Episcopal, and, uh, and Mestus Protestant, one or two, and they separated. Something happened, they didn't believe in certain things. I have the original Bible here for this church I found back in the closet after I bought it. But the big thing about this church that I love so much, it has the names of the different people that helped build this church and paid for the stained glass windows. Oh, and they still exist. And they right, they they had their name on the bottom, and those beautiful stained glass windows, which are to me one of the big things, plus the ceiling, and the shape of the church and so forth, the original bricks and so forth. So actually, the building itself is in original condition and it took quite a bit of care to keep it up where it is today. Everything's been painted and new roof put on and so forth. But uh, it's just the fact that it was built by my grandfather's that I love it it's so much. It's part of your family's history as well mm -hmm. as uh, mm -hmm. Queen Anne's and uh, Ken Island's history. A person came to me who had a lot of money and he was walking down the street with me one day. He said, Bill, I'd like to buy your church and I had only paid $5,000 for it, which was a lot of money for me. He said, Bill, I'll give you 200000 for that church. Mm. And I told him, I said, you know, that belongs to my ancestors and my grandfathers and great-grandfathers and so forth and so on, names on the windows and all. I said, really? 
you don't have money enough to buy that yes, church. Sir. And his hand dropped. He thought money would buy anything. It didn't work. But did it, it can't buy your family. No, it can't. It, and but, and sorry, I yeah. wasn't that rich either, not to be smart, but I just love my yeah. family. Before I go back, now look at it. If someone's watching this and says, you know what, I'd like to get inside and see some of these neat things Bill was talking about. I mean, when I walked in, you had, it looked like tea sets. You have some contemporary mm -hmm. stuff from Ocean City. Mm -hmm. You have decoys. Uh, they just drive to your house or their hours to get they in They could come here to the church. And if, I, if Janet's not open, and I let my wife run it, okay. I don't say, Janet, you got to get up this morning, go over and open the church. I let her do what she wants. When she wants to come know. over, she comes and over. And if she likes to come over, she'll come over and be open. If not, then you're welcome to come to my front door, and I'll come over Seven and open days a week or anytime, anytime they want to. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm tied up with you and you won't let me open up. <laughs> well, this is the only I'm half an hour you. show. It takes three <laughs> no, hours to do it. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm just trying to find a sheet. But really, I enjoy people enjoying okay. the church as much as I do. And they can know? purchase all types of neat things. Mm -hmm. And we'll get, Mike will take some things, pictures of it in a bit. Some old glasses and some old uh, different uh, uh, silverware. And anything you can mention, I have a little bit of everything in here. And I try to keep it in here because I know how much Janet likes to come over and okay. sell things. It's keeping her busy. Yeah, it keeps okay. her busy. And the next thing is, if she runs into a problem, the first thing I do is hear the phone ring over <laughs> to the house. And I have to come over and explain, particularly decoys or anything old like that, sure. to the particular customer. And nine times out of ten, I'll be able to sell them. Oh, let I me mean, get some beautiful stuff. That. Yeah. Oh, it's great stuff out there. But she's she's really the artist who okay. does all the so work. So anytime, and, and if the building's not open itself, just knock on the door right to the left, and someone will come around. Mm -hmm. That's right. Let me go back to you. But you talked about you went to dinners here. Yeah, you church tell me, dinners. Tell me, I mean, what were they? What, tell me a little bit. Tell me when. Are we in the thirties and forties or? When did you come well, to church? I, I, I don't like to go back. 30s, oh, I know. But yeah, the 40s, I, 40s can, okay. yeah, I can remember. And the, the ladies of the church, Methodist okay. church would, would meet here. And uh, they, they had some, you know, turkey or they'd have chicken. Okay. Worcester. Uh, uh, monthly, Worcester. weekly? Uh, uh, I, I don't, you seasonal. know, probably more monthly, okay. bi-monthly. Right. Okay. But I wanted to say something. Sure, out. please. We, we, I want to go back. We we said that we, Claiborne came to Kent Point. Right. Then they moved everything to Broad Creek. Right. Well, in 1850, 52, somewhere around in there, uh, Mr. Hugh Legg and his brother, I can't remember his name, and I think David Jones. What an Archie was his name. It could have been Archie. It could have been. It could have been. Mm -hmm. um, those three gentlemen wanted to buy Stevens Venture. James Stevens and his brother owned two farms, it was called Stevens Venture. Stevens Venture, okay. So they sold it to those three men. Um, six houses, the first six houses built were on Locust Street, crossing where the garage is, going down. And that was Fargo Thomas and uh, the Bryans and Clay Hoxter and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Russell Malig's family. And, mm -hmm. and, just, but, um, and this- Jim Dick West. Yes, that's right, yeah. And uh, from that it started, to grow, they. I remember in reading, uh, a man by the name of Leeds was hard to come over here from Annapolis and build the first six houses, and and the and that's the beginning of what we call Stevensville. Old Stevensville. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, the Billy, I read, and I've got the paper somewhere, uh, where the all the lumber was cut from Doctor Snyder's farm. I don't know who owned it then, but Doc, when Doc bought it, you know. Mm -hmm. Did your family, did your doctor, uh, Denny, own that farm? Dr. Snyder's farm? Yeah. No, he no. only owned farms at Love Point. Okay, Four okay. Farms I don't there. remember who owned that. But, uh, not to cut you off, Nick, uh, the Johnstown flood, they had that flood where the dam mm -hmm. broke right. and came down to Chesapeake Bay. It brought cord after cord after cord of lumber, and my grandfather had two farms at Love Point, and that lumber came right on up <laughs> and floated right out of the on bed? his beach. Yeah. And he was selling lumber up there like he <laughs> ran a lumber yard. And some of the houses right where we're talking about, in fact, Jim Cock is 
home right there where Bobby Aaron lives, was built out of that lumber. Mm -hmm. that, and it was really good, very good seasoned lumber. And there are several homes. In fact, the apartment of the garage is built out of that lumber. It is really beautiful. And this is lumber from the Jonestown flood mm -hmm. came down the bay, well, I hit a farm, uh, okay, yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, and someone's loss and someone's profit. Yeah. yeah. My, my grandfather, he couldn't get the lumber off his beach as fast as people were buying it, mm. horse and wagon. And, just coming up and getting and lumber. he's just getting a load of lumber. And my grandfather was standing there counting his money. <laughs> grandfather didn't. Anyway, uh, I heard my dad talk about it many times, but it really helped my granddad out due to the fact that, you know, he didn't make much money on a farm, no. you know, corn. This meat. was a bonus, right? And this was a bonus. It's a windfall, they used to call sure. it back there, sure. you know. Well, That's look, it. I've been with my two favorite people, right? Nick and Billy. We've been talking the history of Queen Anne's County, and particularly uh, Ken Island and Stevensville. We're going to be back next week, okay? And again, I can't promise you, you get a half an hour of TV. We spend four hours down here having fun. This is Fred McNeil. Thanks for watching QAC TV. Seven. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time.